Good evening and welcome to today's orientation program on a global certification called Certified Financial Planner. I welcome you all. I'm Vinny Tyer from Pinode Major Tech, uh, which is a training organization delivering uh, coaching for professional financial course courses like CFP, CWM, and CFA. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank you for pulling out time from your busy schedule and joining me today on this webinar on a Saturday evening. So I hope I'll be able to add value by the end of this webinar. So this webinar will roughly go on for about 45 minutes. What we intend to do is talk about uh, financial planning as an exciting career opportunity. Um, I'm going to talk about how one can build a career. I'm going to talk about how does one start with financial planning? What are the steps required for it? I'm going to talk about a certification which will help you to get the required knowledge. And then I'm going to also talk about how do you get the certification? What are the requirements? How I can help you with your uh, preparation to get that certification and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is going to be the agenda. After 45 minutes, I'll be opening this session for any questions that you may have. So if in the interim, if you have any questions, you have a QA and a button. So please click on Q&A and put your questions. I'll try and answer it during the session, or I'll promise to answer that during the end of the, or after the session is over after 45 minutes, okay? So the last 15 minutes will be for question and answers. So let's begin with uh, the orientation program. I'll quickly take you through the broad uh, outcome or the agenda of this program. So first, I'm going to talk about financial planning and what is the need. I'm going to talk about, ab about my uh, training institution, uh, what is the vision, mission, value that we have. I'm going to talk about what about me uh, as your tutor and mentor, then the courses that are on offer. And I'm going to talk about the certification that is there, uh, which is CFP and the things related to the CFP program. Okay. So before I start talking about uh, my organization and the CFP course, what I want to do is I want to start with a story, okay? And it's going to be my story, okay? I hope you find this interesting and every word that I say is all true. Uh, so I started my career back in 2003 uh, at the age of 18. And after just completing 12th, I started working um, due to some uh, reasons and uh, at that point of time, I started working for a financial uh, organization, uh, which was into banking. And that, that is the point when I started, uh, you know, getting exposed to this uh, exciting world of finance. Uh, for the three years during my graduation, I worked for this uh, organization. I learned a lot, although it had nothing to do with financial planning as a concept, but it gave me a fair understanding about the finance world overall. And after I completed my graduation, by the way, I'm an arts graduate. Uh, so some of you uh, will get surprised at how an arts graduate can uh, teach a finance subject. So it's all about passion. It's all about what you like. And if you like something, then there is uh, no one to stop you from learning what you love. Okay. So after I completed my graduation in political science in the arts uh, segment, I then started thinking what next? So I completed my graduation in 2006. So I wanted to, you know, continue my career in the finance field, but I was not pretty happy with the work that I was doing during my undergraduation days. So I started exploring what can I do uh, to further enhance my career. So like every normal individual uh, or maybe a graduate um, thinks about doing an MBA. Uh, I also thought of doing an MBA, but before doing MBA, I thought, let me gather some more experience. And I started working. So in 2006, I quit the uh, banking segment and I in, in entered the insurance uh, segment. I started working for another company. While I was working, I started uh, exploring what other opportunities can I have you know, in terms of having some extra sources of income. And that's where in 2006, I landed up meeting someone who was from the insurance world. Okay, So he was working uh, with a life insurance company and he approached me and um, he told me, why don't you come and, you know, talk to me and I've got some exciting opportunity. And I did not know anything about investments. I did not know anything about insurance. Um, the only thing I knew that, uh, insurance, um, is something that will give you some protection and will give you some money. But beyond that, I did not have any clue. So I met the gentleman and 
he took me through the entire process of you know what insurance is and why should you consider you know selling insurance so it was a two hour long uh, meeting with him and i mean this kind of things have been happening with me quite a few people approaching and you know talking about selling insurances but this was something which was new because the way it was explained to me was different so i started uh, my career in the finance field uh, apart from the banking experience that i had by selling insurance okay so from 2006 till about 2012 for about 6 years i was doing insurance selling but in 2008 something uh, struck me uh, and this was the time when the financial crisis had happened and that is where a lot of the insurances that i had sold most of them were ulips and because i had very limited understanding of how ulips work and i had a very rich uh, uh data about the past performance of how ulips used to work so with that limited amount of information and knowledge i started i had started pitching ulips from 2006 till 2008 and then this financial crisis happened and the market tank okay so those of you who are in this uh, field back then i'm sure you must have experienced the kind of uh, a drawdown that had happened or the kind of uh, fall that people experienced in the value of their investments so here i was i had no clue how to talk to clients uh, what should i go and tell them and how do i console them and how do i tell them that you know you stay invested and then uh, things will improve i i did not have an answer when things will improve but i knew somewhere that things should improve in uh, the due course of time but when i was doing this counseling for my existing client something struck me that the kind of knowledge that i had and on the basis of which i was advising was not right okay there was something missing so i started exploring what should i do should i do an mba or should i do some uh specific course which will help me give or which will help me understand Uh, the in and out about uh, personal finance, and that's where I tumbled upon this uh, certification called as CFP, Certified Financial Planner Program, in two thousand and eight. So, within a couple of weeks after I got to know about this program, I enrolled, and it was about after two years of break from my uh, college that I again enrolled myself, and it it had been about six years since I was away from maths uh, because. 11 12th again i was in arts 10th was the only year or till 10th was the only period wherein i was uh, you know having maths as a subject so here again in 2008 i lined up into this program uh, which is full of numbers and i was not very comfortable with numbers uh, when i started this course okay so 2008 i started studying and for about 8 9 months you know i kept on going to the classes and i used to only open my books on the weekends okay uh, since i was working i was feeling Uh, that you know i am not getting time and then uh, there was too much of things to study and 8 9 months i just you know um, just used to go to classes and just open my book and only study during that time and once the class is over i only used to open the book the next class okay that is that was how my journey was and then um, in the last 4 months i suddenly realized that just 4 months before my validation because i had registered for the uh, i mean i had registered with fpsb which is the licensing body i suddenly realized that uh, there are only 4 months left before i have to renew my uh, validity and then i thought let me give it a shot let me try clearing as much as possible in terms of the exam and at that point of time there were five levels of exam okay so the first exam i gave i think i re remember i gave it in may 2009 okay i don't exactly remember the date but i remember the month okay so i gave my first exam and i flunked okay and i flunked badly and that was the first exam in my life that i had flunked and if i have to give you a little academic background about me uh, i am a 10th topper in my school i am a board topper in 12th i was ranked 17th across uh, maharashtra in the hsc board and for someone like me failing in an exam was a shocker okay and that changed something in me uh, because i was taking this a little lightly so after this particular failure i started again preparing for this exam as if this is something you know if i do this i'm going to achieve something in life that was the vision with which i again started studying 
and over the next three months, somehow by putting in efforts, by putting in too much time and concentrating, I was able to clear the entire program in a span of less than three months. Okay, because uh, one month, you know, after filling the exam, I started preparing again seriously. So in three months, I could clear all the exams, and there was. Uh, there I was in August 2009 when I cleared my final exam. I distinctly rem remember the date. It was 29th of August 2009, and that was a Saturday. And interestingly, at that point of time, the final exam used to happen in Mumbai. Okay, so three of our friends or you know batchmates had gone to Mumbai to give the exam, and fortunately, I was one of the three or two of the three who cleared, and uh, one person had failed. So why am I telling this story to you? Is because after I cleared this thing, I started uh, realizing the importance of financial planning. In fact, when I was doing this program, I started talking to people in and around me and started helping them in you know, understanding how they need to look at personal finance, what is the kind of money that they will require for certain uh, financial milestones, how do they need to look at insurance, how do they need to look at investments and so on and so forth. So while I was doing it, I was also enjoying this entire process because a lot of people were not aware about some basic concepts. Okay. So after I cleared the exam, what I thought, let me start helping people. Let me start giving free consultation to people in and around me. And I started, you know, with my friends, family, uh, wherein I approached them. I told them that, let me help you plan your retirement. Let me help you plan uh, some of the nearest term financial goals. Let me help you calculate how much money would you require for your children's education, so on and so forth. So I started creating some simple basic plans for them and started sharing these um, discoveries, if I have to say, with the people uh, to whom I had approached. And to my surprise, a lot of people who actually went through that entire exercise and after that exercise, when they looked at the document that I had prepared, a very basic, simple document that I had prepared, they were very surprised to see the kind of numbers that was showing over there. And they did not believe that this could be a reality at some point of time. So when I was talking about retirement, I was showing them a picture wherein they will need at least a few crores uh, for them to retire comfortably. When I was talking about the children's education, I was talking about them requiring anywhere upwards of 20, 30 lakh rupees when the children turned of their uh, of the college going age and people were really taken aback and they did not have any answer of how they are going to manage these things okay because usually when you know you ask any individual who has not planned for his finances people are always in this false notion that because they have an active income they feel that they have time for them to save and i'm sure you would agree with me that when you have this kind of notion the kind of uh, time that you have keeps on running faster than what you anticipate. So a lot of these people were not prepared with whatever things that they had to achieve in their financial life. Okay. So slowly and steadily, I started talking to more and more people. I started to ask for references and I started charging a very limited amount of money. So I remember that in 2010, I charged 500 rupees for creating a financial plan. And I also remember how I got that client. It was not through a reference. Uh, so there was a medical shop near my house. So I used to uh, know the uncle who used to manage a medical shop. And I just told him that I want to put a, a, a kind of a pamphlet. I want to stick it around. And so that, you know, people who come to your shop, if they read it and, you know, they can contact me. So I put that. And after about a couple of weeks, I got one call and he was interested in knowing what I had to offer. And that is how I got my first client, uh, whom I charged about 500 rupees. And that's where I started getting confidence. Okay. But all this while, while I was doing this thing, I was also working. So it was not that I was doing this full time. So I had that liberty wherein I could go a little slow. At the same time, I could explore, I could make mistakes. I could learn uh, from other people's experience. Uh, I also had a network of people who were already into this. They were not too much, but you know, they had some bit of uh, basic knowledge into this. So I also used to talk to them. I had my friends also uh, during the CFP program, which I had made, so I used to talk to them. So that was a process with which I started. So from 2010 until 2015, uh, when I was still working, I slowly and started, slowly and steadily started getting more and more clients. 
and i started building this practice and i started enjoying this more and more so what i used to do then is weekends i used to completely devote uh, towards financial planning and monday to friday i used to work into my full time job and i used to consider those 8 to 9 hours in my full time job as a uh, kind of a part time uh, thing and i used to consider this financial planning thing as a full time thing that was the mindset with which which i was working in 2011 i happened to chance upon a, a project wherein i was asked to teach cfp as a program to uh, in a particular institute because the tutor was not available for a period of 3 months so i got this opportunity so i thought i was a little reluctant initially to take this opportunity so i thought let me take this opportunity it will be a good brush up of my knowledge as well so i started teaching cfp back in 2011 and from then onwards um, i've been teaching so it's been about 10 years i've been teaching and in terms of the financial planning consulting i've been doing since about 11 years now 2015 is when i quit my full time job because by then i had about 60 families that i was managing and it was increasingly becoming difficult for me to uh, manage both my full time job as well as my uh, this financial planning consulting so i started uh, uh, then thinking about how i can get into this full time and and i prepared uh, for that financially as well because this was a profession wherein you had to charge money to people for giving advice and in india you know most of the people think that advice is free okay what you don't have to pay for advice and people generally make money out of the commissions or brokerage that they make and here i was wherein i was not i was charging fees for my advice uh so i had a late start now why i came to into this profession was because uh, like i told you in the initial days i was feeling there was a lot of gap wherein whenever people wanted any kind of advice they used to either approach an insurance agent or they used to go to a bank or they used to go to a product seller and they used to talk about their challenges and most of the most of the times these product sellers or insurance agents or uh, bank uh, executives under the garb of advice they used to sell products which most of the times were not suitable to the client and had high inbuilt commissions to it these products most of the times were not suitable so i saw that as a big opportunity in a country like india wherein financial literacy is almost zero okay you may have a well qualified individual but in terms of financial literacy very few people have got financial literacy even today okay so even in a massively developed economy like us even there there is financial uh, literacy which is very very limited although it is much much better than what india has but even a developed country can have challenges so i sense this opportunity that it's a huge country and at some point of time people will realize the need for quality advice and people will realize the need for paying for quality advice and i'm sure more many people like me would have sensed that opportunity but i could act upon that and i could i had the liberty to you know start a fee based advisory which many of the people who were into this profession already they did not have that liberty because they were already into product selling i was also into product selling but i was not dependent mainly upon it okay so to give you some interesting stats about why financial planning is a very big industry today if you talk about the population that we have in india is in excess of 130 crores okay if you talk about certified financial planners who are who are the individuals who have the requisite knowledge and the right certification to advise uh, clients there are hardly 2000 people in india okay so if you divide 130 crores by 2000 certified financial planner per certified financial planner if you look at the planner to people ratio it comes to 1 is to 6 lakh 50000 so for every financial planner there are 650000 people is the kind of a ratio that is so can you imagine the kind of uh, scope that this particular profession has okay and what you need to be honest and i will also share my advisory journey from 2015 till 2021 what you need is about 100 to 150 fee paying good quality clients if you can get that 150 100 to 150 good fee paying clients i think you are sorted for life so you are not only planning for the financial freedom for your clients you are also planning for financial freedom for yourself wherein you have the control of your timing you have the control of how much you earn 
and you have the control of doing other things also parallelly with it okay plus with the advent of media promoting advisory sebi coming up with lot of regulations i'm sure some of you might be aware that in 2013 sebi came up with this regulation wherein they came up with a concept of registered investment advisor wherein what they said was that if you want to have an advice you should really you should actually approach a registered investment advisor and who is a registered investment advisor he or she is someone who will offer fee based financial planning advice he or she will not earn from any commissions or any brokerage uh, that someone earns by selling a product and that was one of the first times that there was seriousness into this financial there was seriousness put into this financial planning uh, role or advisory Uh, scope in india okay so coming back to my journey in 2015 when i started full time into this i had my own share of challenges for the first two years and i started this as a partnership firm with someone who i had, who i had met when i was pursuing cfa so i'm also a qualified cfa charter holder so when i met this person uh, he also had the same objective he had also quit his banking job and then we both of us came together and then we started this with only two of us we did not have any employee we started our uh, journey from a shared office space um, you know something like an incubation center where you have desk so we started our journey from there and slowly and steadily we started you know talking to existing clients we started uh, telling them about giving references so we had a tough time so first two years was not that easy as i had assumed Uh, after having spent about five years already into this field, but when you start something full time, you know that is when you start realizing the challenges in it, into it. So first two to three years was challenging, and after three years, the kind of work that we had put in the initial two to three years, it started yielding results. And I'm happy to say that recently we completed our uh, sixth anniversary, and now we are a team of six people, and we are into completely fee-based financial planning advice. Okay. and today we are managing over 330 families across 12 countries and 17 cities and we are managing a little over 150 crores worth of financial assets amongst these 330 families now was this something that we had visioned on the first day of the setting up the advisory thing no probably no we did not vision that this would happen in, in early as early as 5 to 6 years we thought that it might take but 10 to 12 years but now the way we are you know getting the kind of references the kind of assets we are building it's now compounding okay so the kind of struggles that i have uh, gone through in setting up this practice and the kind of practical exposure that i have i'm trying to help aspirants who wants to either start their own advisory or wants to make a career in financial planning uh, you know learn from my mistakes or learn from the struggles that i have you know by getting the practical elements into this entire program okay so this was uh, a not so short story about me uh, i hope you had some uh, valuable outcomes out of this story and what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about this firm so how this phenodemy uh, came into existence so in 2019 so like i told you i started teaching cfp uh, back in 2011 and for about 8 years i taught cfp in different institutes uh as a guest faculty and till today i have trained over 1000 uh, cfp aspirants and i think at least if not uh less i mean at least 450 or more of them have become cfp uh, certificates okay the challenge in the cfp program is that a lot of people do not complete it when they start okay and that was the challenge that i saw uh, in 8 years and today also i'm seeing that challenge that people start but generally they don't uh, complete and that's where you know the number of people who actually complete the entire thing and get that cfp is very very less and that's where i found this uh, firm wherein i thought that let me help push people you know to learn to complete this course so that they not only get the qualification but they also can become able professionals and can make a difference uh, in this world wherein you know you need so many advisors you need so many people who can help other people to solve their uh, personal finance challenge okay so that's how phenodemy was born in 2019 now the mission of this company when i found this 
was to help about 1 million that is about 10 lakh people to become accomplished financial professionals so it consists of a mix of students as well as existing working professionals who can become accomplished financial professionals so i've trained over 5000 people overall uh, about and out of this 5000 people about 1000 i have trained in the cfp program and the remaining people who i have trained uh, over 4000 people in the other programs Uh, there are people from the banking industry wealth management industry mutual fund companies brokerage houses and there are people who have worked for uh, several years and now they are looking to update their knowledge okay and i'm sure some of you in this audience are also looking at upgrading your knowledge and getting to the next level all right so that was the mission with which i founded this firm my vision was to provide dynamic practical and interactive learning environment because what i found was the gap um in this particular field was that people were there people were coaching but it was more bookish in knowledge it was more theoretical in knowledge and most of the people were not able to apply that theory into practical and that is the big gap that i saw and because i was a practicing financial advisor i thought that i could fill up this gap and i could create that practical learning environment wherein people are able to understand those theoretical concepts by applying them on the in the practical life so that was the vision with which i had started this form and i have three clear cut values one is integrity second is excellence and the third is accountability towards our students okay this is the core of the organization i have already to told about you i have got over 15 years of work experience i have worked in different organizations into the sales role hardcore sales i have uh, worked into the training department of few multinational companies i have done content development by qualification i am a cfa charter holder completed the cfa program in 2017 uh completed cfa program in 2009 and i also completed the cwm charter uh, program in 2014 apart from this i have done some specialized courses uh, there is one program uh, called as investment operation certificate from cisi uk i've also done that uh, as part of my job role when i used to work with one of the mncs like i already told you apart from running this finance uh, running this training institute i also run a sebi registered investment advisory firm wherein there are more than 300 families uh, to whom we are helping to achieve financial freedom and cumulatively among these 300 plus families i'm helping them to manage more than 150 crores of wealth i also deliver trainings for different organizations i am an impanel trainer with ciel which is one of the renowned uh, training providers and they conduct several programs for different uh, organizations in the financials in financial service industry a lot of mutual fund companies a lot of wealth management outfits so i deliver trainings for these programs as well and also i am a visiting faculty for ifi business school and indira business school i deliver guest lectures uh, in these colleges uh, during the year as when i get an opportunity okay so this is about me then i'm going to talk about what are the course offerings uh, that are there right now so there are three programs that i'm eventually going to offer uh, today as we speak i have the entire cfp program readily available in the next 3 months i'm planning to launch the next program which is chartered wealth manager which is quite similar to the cfp program and then maybe in a year's time i'm going to launch the cfa program which is chartered finance analyst program okay so these are going to be the three outcomes and i'm going to also keep on adding some smaller certifications offered by nism i also plan to uh, create some small tutorials on uh, concepts uh, like uh, understanding the alternative investments understanding taxation in detail understanding uh, wealth management and several other topics i plan to record those sessions and offer the, those also as free courses in over the next 12 months okay so now we'll talk about the cfp program so cfp program uh, is there in india since 2001 so it's been about 20 years that cfp program is there however until 2019 cfp program was run as an affiliate program it was an affiliation taken from fpsb us and for about 19 years it was run as an affiliate program and in 2019 us the main governing body from us took over the entire program in india looking at the potential that india has as a country so from 2019 onwards fpsb us fpsb stands for financial planning standards board is directly conducting this 
particular program in India. Okay. The CFP program is accredited by SEBI, which is the regulator for the financial markets in India, as well as National Institute of Securities Market, which is NISM. Apart from India, this CFP program is recognized in 27 countries and territories globally. Okay. And in India, like I told you, there are hardly about 2000 certificates, but globally there are more than 190,000 certificates. Okay. So out of a population of over 750 crore, we have almost 20% population in India, but we do not even have 1% of the certificates in India. Okay. So there is a massive gap, which over the next one decade, if you see the number of CFP certificates in India is bound to grow the kind of demand that is going to get created over the next one decade for this particular program is going to be massive. And that's the reason you will see a lot of interest getting generated by different organization and FPSB uh, coming over in India and taking over and administering this entire program. So that talks a lot about this program. So what are the countries in which this program is recognized? So countries like Australia, Austria, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Ireland, Peru, New Zealand, Switzerland, UK, US, so on and so forth. Okay. So these are the countries in which these, this recognition, this certification is recognized. Okay. Does that mean that if you clear the CFP certification in India, can you go and practice in a country like Australia? Yes, you can, provided there are some additional uh, exams that you'll have to give in that country because every country has a different tax law. Some of the instruments that are available over there is a little different, but you will have recognition, but you'll have to give some extra examination for you to be eligible to start working in that country. Okay. So that's how uh, it is recognized in these locations. Moving on, I'm going to talk about what are the key benefits of being a CFP certificate as a practitioner. Okay. So people who are seeking to work. Okay. Although I'm a big believer that people who do this program, they should set up their own practice. Okay. Just like when you complete chartered accountancy as a complete program, you either have an option to work or you either have an option to start your own practice. And I'm sure you would agree that people who start their own practice, they have initial struggles, but over a period of time, once their practice is established, they have a very good earning opportunity and they have a good career progression. Okay. Similarly, when you become a CFP practitioner, either you work for some organization or either you start your own practice. Okay. If you start working for any organization or if you're already working for an organization, you're a working professional. It has been, there has been a survey conducted in about six countries by FPSB and they have observed that 37% of the people get their promotion after completing this particular program. Okay. People who have completed this program, they have seen that 57% of these people have reported an increase in the number of clients that they service following this program, because of the kind of knowledge that you get once you come to this program is going to be immense. And that is going to help you in talking, um, and, or giving quality advice to the client. The client is going to recognize that and is going to give you more and more business and referrals. And that is how 57% of the people saw the number of clients that they were servicing increasing plus 63% of the people who complete the certification also saw their income growing 72% of the people felt that they were satisfied with the career that they were having after completing this program. And 87 of 87% of the people were confident that they would be, they would be able to uh, keep their clients for a longer period. Had they not got the certification as compared to that, they feel more confident when a majority of the clients, they think that they will be able to serve for a longer period. So that was the benefit, uh, that came out as a part of this survey that was conducted by FASB. Now let's talk about the companies who have hired CFP practitioners. So what are the benefits that they saw? So 59% of the companies who employed CFP professionals, they saw that there were fewer complaints from the clients. Okay because of the kind of quality advice, the kind of knowledge that the CFP professionals had, the kind of complaints that came in for these professionals were fewer. Then 69% of the uh, companies, they felt that the corporate risk, because they have got qualified professionals, the corporate risk was 
lowered. Then 16% of the firms also reported that their assets under management had grown over a period of time. 76% of the companies felt that because of CFP professionals, they were able to have a higher client retention. Then 79% of the firm planned on increasing the number of CFP professionals that they had on roles. And 84% of the people who or 84% of the companies who hired CFP professionals, they knew that CFP professionals had a positive impact and they wanted to hire more and more people so that they could grow their client base. And this was again, as per one of the survey that was conducted by FPSB in about 92 financial services companies in 12 territories. Okay, so these were some of the key benefits of the CFP program for the employers. Now let's talk about the career opportunities in this program. I'm going to talk about the two uh, sections of career opportunities. One is the conventional one, the other one is the unconventional one. So under the conventional career opportunities, you can either work for a financial planning firm. So there are many financial planning firms uh, across India and these financial planning firms are growing by leaps and bounds and they are looking for qualified CFP professionals to work with them. And even if this organization may not be as big as some of the multinational companies, but they have the potential to grow big. And these are the companies who value qualified professionals more. Okay. And maybe you might, you might start with a lower composition, but as in when you grow in experience, as in when you have the kind of knowledge or you enhance your knowledge, obviously your composition will keep on increasing. Okay. And I've seen that thing happening in my own organization as well. You can work with banks and you know, slowly and steadily you will see, and some of the banks have also started having a separate advisory division in their organization. Okay. So earlier, what used to happen is the bank RMs used to only do the product selling, but after the CBRI regulation, most of the banks have got an advisory division wherein they are involved in advisory, which means that they need qualified people who can do effective advisory to their existing set of clients of the bank. One can also look for opportunities in wealth management companies, and there are many wealth management and boutique firms in India. People can also work for mutual fund companies, either in the sales role or in the uh, backend role, operational role, or you must be aware that there are so many fintech firms that are there in India who offer online advisory to clients and these fintech firms want qualified CFP professionals who can help their set of clients to have quality advice. So these are the conventional opportunities uh, that are available for CFP professionals. If I talk about the unconventional opportunities, you can start your own practice as a financial advisor. I agree that the path to starting your advisory is not very easy. It's going to take at least two to three years worth of your time and efforts. But if you can tide over those two to three years, I can assure you that for the remaining part of your life, you don't have to worry and look back uh, because in this two to three years of uh, challenging period, you would have created a base on which you can progress for the remainder part of your life. And one thing is very, very important in the financial advisory is that people think that because of the advent of technology, human financial advisors might get redundant at some point of time in future. And I am completely, I completely disagree with this fact. I'm not saying that, uh, the robo advisory will not be there. It will be there. So you will have a combination of robo advisory along with human advisory and the term that has been coined for a combination of robo plus human advisory is called as bionic advisor. So what a bionic advisor does is you take the help of technology and then you also add the human element and then you offer your services because what I firmly believe is that advisory is more of managing human emotions rather than doing only number crunching rather than only advising how much it needs to be invested and where it's also about understanding the aspirations of the client understanding the emotions behind decision making and as a human being relating to those emotions and helping the client to make right decisions. And trust me, no matter how much the technology advances, no robotic, no robot will be able to ever replace the human emotions that comes as a part of the financial decision making. So you'll always need a human financial advisor who can manage the emotional side and the technical, the number and the uh, other side can be managed by a robot. And that's where 
i am very very optimistic about the about this field and i encourage a lot of my students to start their own practice and i give them i help extend the help to them if anyone is looking on how they should be setting up their own financial planning practice apart from this they can also get into training so training is another space wherein there is a dearth of quality trainers in india there are many people who are qualified cfp certificates but many very few are equipped to deliver that knowledge to the students so if you are good in delivering and if you have got the right knowledge you can also make your career in this particular in this particular field in the training delivery and that over a period of time will also pay you handsomely and the last thing is that if if any one of you is interested into journalism okay apart you know people working for this uh, business magazine this financial magazines working for uh, companies like et money working for companies like money control value research uh, working for company like business standard when they need you know you will you will see that there are a lot of personal finance sections available over there so they need people who understand personal finance so that also can be one of the career opportunities that one can explore so these three things come under the unconventional side of the career opportunity how does one progress in the career in this particular uh, program so if you are an entry level participant with no experience after doing this program you may land up with a compensation of anywhere between 2 to 5 lakh rupees if you are a middle if if you already have some experience and you work in a middle level role then you can expect anywhere between 5 to 15 lakh rupees of uh, compensation uh, and then if you are someone who has at least 8 to 10 years of work experience and you working in, at the senior level then you can expect a compensation of excess of 15 lakh this has been the industry standards okay in some cases the compensation could be higher as well okay so this is how one can progress in the career now talking about the entire cfp structure it has got four tracks earlier these were called as modules now these are called as tracks the first three tracks is something that you need to clear only after clearing the first three tracks you can go for the fourth track you become eligible for the fourth track so in the first track you learn everything about investments okay and this not only talks about the indian investment uh, scenario but it also includes a global scenario in the curriculum so earlier in the old legacy cfp program if some of you are aware the curriculum was more revolved around india okay but now curriculum is more revolved on, around the global information and so about 70% is global but 30% is indian so that makes it a, a more globalized program uh, which was not there earlier in the legacy plan, uh, legacy program so first is investment planning the second is the retirement and tax planning program here you'll talk about uh, the different retirement planning concepts how do you create a, a retirement plan what are the investment opportunities available you'll also talk about taxation as a concept in track 3 you talk about insurances you talk about risk planning and estate planning and once you clear this you move on to the fourth track which is a case study based track and in this case study based track you'll have two case studies you'll have some questions on this case studies you have to use the knowledge that you have you know acquired in the first three tracks and use that knowledge to solve the fourth track which is this financial planning capstone module in terms of the examination pattern this examination happens online and during the uh, covid period for the last 18 months the examination is happening from the comfort of your home okay you are no more required to go to uh, an examination center maybe after a year this might change but even if you have to go to a, to an examination center even there the examination will happen online okay so today it is happening from your home but later on also even if it continues from an examination center it will happen online only the good news is that every exam is a multiple choice question exam it's an objective uh, exam you don't have to write anything and the fourth track which is the final track these are all case study based again these are objective multiple choice question although the passing score is not defined by fpsb but 
somewhere around say 70% is the passing score anywhere between 60 to 70% is the passing score it's a controlled result that fpsb has earlier you used to get the result instantly after giving the exam but now you get the result typically after a week or two okay and 60 to 70 percent is the passing score now talking about the course fee what you pay to fpsb as a part of this entire program so you have to first enroll with fpsb paying by paying about 165 us dollars so since it is a global program the amount that you pay is in usd then once you pay the enrollment program, you need to register for the track. Okay. So there are three tracks, primary tracks, and then there is a fourth track. So for the first three primary tracks, which is investment, retirement, and risk, you pay $60 each, wherein you register for that track. And what you get is the content and the soft copies of the book, which will help you to prepare. Once you register, you complete the ethics program. So ethics has now, be, has now been made mandatory. So you need to go to the content, you need to complete the ethics program. And after that, you have to give a prelim exam. And once you clear that, you are eligible to give the, you are eligible to register for the actual exam. So for the actual exam, you pay $61 per track. So there are three uh, preliminary tracks wherein you have this $183 that you pay in total. Now, mind you, this is per track. So you don't have to pay 180 plus 183 totally at one time you have to pay it in stages so initially what do you pay 165 dollars then you pay 60 dollars for the textbook after this when you're ready for the exam you pay 100, you pay 61 dollars then once you complete one track then you again buy the second tracks textbook by paying 160 dollars then again you register for the exam by paying 61 dollars and so on and so forth so likewise the total that you pay for this three tracks is 180 for the textbooks 60 dollars into three tracks and $183 for the examination, that is $61 into three tracks. After you complete these three tracks, it has now been made mandatory by FPSB to go for the certification. That means you get a digital certificate on blockchain for which you need to pay an additional $100 and you will get the three certifications for the three tracks that you have cleared. Post which you become eligible to give the final track and before you give the final track, you have to buy the textbook, which is costing about $120. And after you clear, uh, after you buy this and you're ready to give the exam, you're required to fulfill some formalities. Then you can register for the exam, which for which you need to pay about $122. So everything put together, what you pay to FPSB in terms of the enrollment, the textbook fees and the examination fee is about $870. And if I convert this into INR at a standard conversion rate of 75 rupees, it works out to about 65,250 rupees. Okay. This you have to pay over a period of say one year and not in one shot. Okay. I hope you're clear on this. Then let's talk about what I have to offer as part of me helping you to prepare for this course. So the coaching that I'm going to provide to you is going to be an online live class which happens every Sunday between 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Indian Standard Time. I, I, I do have students from countries outside of India. So it happens 8 to 11 a.m. So if any one of you are not, up, are not from India, then uh, it is 8 to 11 a.m. IST. The duration will be approximate 10 months. It might extend by a month depending upon the breaks that are given between tracks. In case if you happen to miss any one of the session, a few sessions because of some prior commitment, you can always watch the recorded session, which is available on the learning management system. On the learning management system, you also have access to notes. You also have access to a course curriculum. You also have access to practice test. You have access to mock test, which is an exam style mock, te mock test, which you can give periodically. Then we also have a topic wise concept checker. Practical assignments are given as a and applicable. And then after you complete each track, you have to undergo three comprehensive exam style mock tests. Okay. And this will be your precursor before you give the final exam. And if you're able to do well in these exams, I can assure you that you will be able to clear the exam comfortably. If you're able to clear this. 
mock test. So this is what I have to offer in the course schedule. Now let's talk about the methodology that I use. So first of all, the live version training that I'm going to deliver, it's going to be approximately hundred hours in total duration. There are going to be 50 hours of recorded sessions that will be, that is already available on the LMS. I'm going to focus more on, since I'm a practicing financial advisor, I'm going to focus also on the practical and concept based learning by giving you real life examples so that you're able to relate the theory to the practice. Okay. We have a very limited batch size. So I'm able to give, because I run only one batch a year and I'm going to start my new batch from tomorrow. So I'm, I run only one batch in a year because I do this more as a passion hobby and I want to really give my best to the students that I'm teaching. So I also give some projects and activities depending upon the scenarios so that you also get hands-on experience in financial planning. Um, in this se uh, season, I'll be conducting fortnightly topic tests so that you are uh, well-versed with the concepts. So you are hands-on. Then I will also be periodically conducting doubt solving sessions so that any, in case of any doubts, you can attend those sessions and you can ask. I also have some one-to-one -one interactions, typically on a Wednesday, which you can pre-book the time slot, wherein if you have got some specific questions, I am happy to help you in solving those questions either on phone or through Zoom. Then whatever support that is required for preparation of the exam, post the exam, all those kind of support are delivered uh, by us uh, without any, uh, you know, without too much of uh, hassles for you. So we've got the entire complete laid out processes and uh, I'll be uh, your lead tutor where in most of the models I'll be delivering myself and we may have some guest faculties delivering some of the lectures in this particular season. But anyone who is going to deliver is going to be a qualified uh, CFP professional who will have a minimum of five years of training experience and uh, will deliver, you know, rich and beautiful content uh, and explanation to you during this training program. Okay. I also believe in the concept of that you should not be mugging any formula. Okay. Because finance is so vast and there are so and so many formulas, it becomes really tricky sometimes to remember everything. So in more than 90% of the occasions, I tend to create a scenario wherein you are not required to remember the formula. What you need to understand is the rationale behind that formula, how that formula has been derived. So if you understand the rationale, you don't have to remember because even I myself do not remember almost most of the formulas. Okay. Even after 12, 13 years of practice, okay, so I'm going to help you intuitively know how to derive solutions to a particular problem. Then I'm also in this particular season, I'm also going to help you have some uh, informative infographics, some posters, there'll be periodic communication or updates that is going to be given to you on WhatsApp. So we have a WhatsApp group and you will have a question bank, which has more than 2000 questions, which is there for your practice. So more and more questions you practice, the more you are prepared for giving the exam. And we also offer you 100% placement and internship assistance. So as and when we come across any opportunities, we'll roll out that opportunity for you. And if you're eligible, you can, we can schedule your interview and then you can take it forward from there. So this is what we have to offer in terms of the trading methodology at uh, this institute. So talking about the fees uh, that we charge for this particular program. So the actual fees is 35,000, which I'm going to increase uh, in the next few months. But if you enroll before 31st of October, that is in the next two weeks, that is next to next Sunday before that, you'll get an instant discount of 5,000 rupees. On top of that, you will get virtual coins worth 5,000 rupees, which means that in case in future, if you offer any courses, any paid courses, you can straight away get a discount of 5,000 against that purchase. Uh, so you get that as a credit into your wallet. Uh, once, once you sign up, you have a virtual wallet. So this is the cashback that you get. And this has a lifetime validity. So anytime in the future, if you want to avail this, you can avail. Plus, since I want everyone to give the exam and clear the exam, I also offer a scholarship cashback in provided you clear the exam within 15 months from the date of enrollment with us. 
we give you a 5000 rupees of cash back if you complete the entire program okay why i have this is because it's an encouragement for you to clear the exam i am there to support uh, as a support for you to clear this exam but for you to also have that uh, rigorness uh, that seriousness this particular offer has been given uh, to you so provided you to complete within 15 months which is quite possible you get a 5000 rupees of cash back actual cash back so we'll refund 5000 rupees from the overall fees okay plus i will also have a bonus session towards the end of the entire program wherein i'm going to teach you how to construct a financial plan in excel and mind you this is a wonderful program uh, that i'm sure you will enjoy wherein you will be tying back all the concepts that you would have learned uh, over the four tracks you know and you will be applying those concepts in this particular session okay so that is coming as uh, as a bonus session for you which is free of cost so we generally when i conduct this outside i charge 5000 rupees per participant okay so that is coming to you free of cost at the end of the program so this is what i had to offer i am open for questions if you have anything feel free to ask me